Steve and Roger are here to power flush a heating system. I'm just going to use the infrared thermometer just to give them a check. We're looking for cold spots really. Difference, top of the radiator to the bottom. So hopefully after the power flush, that'll be sorted. It's essential that you read the manual thoroughly, particularly for high pressure equipment like this. While Roger starts connecting up the system, Steve goes up to the loft to put a cleaning agent in the F&D tank. The agent can be put straight into the power flusher, so check the manual first. This power flush needs to be connected to the central heating system, temporarily in place of the central heating pump. What we're going to do now, we're going to uh, isolate the pump valves, uh, turn them off. Is it? Oh, great. Roger encounters a problem. Uh, we've isolated both valves, but they're not holding, which is an indication of either scale or a sludge, or there could be anything blocking that from the gate from uh, shutting and isolating the actual water coming into the pump. Having drained the system down, Steve and Roger can now isolate and remove the central heating pump. This is really why we're uh, looking to clean this system out. As you can see inside the valve, there's a big build-up of magnetite. 20 years of the system working, it just starts to clog up valves, the pump itself, and the radiators. So what we'll do, we'll connect up the system, get the jet flush working. Right, what we need to do is uh, we need to go upstairs and um, isolate the uh, F&E system up in the roof space just so as we're not pumping water around that and uh, around the system. What we've got is two rubber plugs, um, one for the uh, open vent and one for the cold feed. Let's fit them in. There we go. Safely isolated. To make sure the power flusher cleans all the radiators properly, they all need to be shut off. Then each one can be turned on on its own and flushed through. Okay then, Roger, um, you got it sussed? Yeah, I think so. The beauty of this unit is um, it's, it's fitted with a flow-operated valve, so as once the water goes on, it'll fill to the correct level. Once we've got the water in the system, we can then set the knobs to flush in the system, which is the orange one to that green radiator and uh, the purple one to the, uh, the flushing symbol. That's right. Um, and then once we're ready to start it up, open up the green and the red valves, and we're going to pump it around one radiator individually, yeah? Yeah. And every five minutes we can reverse the flow. Oh, that's a good idea. It is, with the pump still running. Oh, brilliant. Well, handy, isn't it? Good. Let's fill it up, then. Go on, then. Let's go, boys. The power flusher pushes water through the system at high speed to flush away dirt and build up. The direction of flow can be reversed to help shift stubborn bits. When the water in the unit itself gets too dirty, it can be dumped out to the drain. To flush each radiator out, Roger first turns on the radiator, then he fills the power flusher tank with fresh water. He switches the valves on the top of the power flusher to push water through the radiator. As it's going, there's a control to reverse the flow which can be switched even when the pump is going. Once the water coming through the radiator is clean, Roger can shut it off, dump the water and move on to the next radiator. Meet at the power flusher, Steve uses a turbidity tube to test the water. With the tube full of central heating water, the marks at the bottom of the tube should still be visible. The system is clean, so all Steve has to do to finish is add the inhibitor. <laughs> 